As someone who started playing Roblox over 7 years ago, I've always wondered what was the difference between an R6 rig and an R15 rig. Like, I remember the avatar catalog saying something about, you know, R6 and R50. Like, you were able to either pick between the two, or like, there were certain avatars that you were able to buy. And you know, some of those avatars were R15 or R6 or whatever. And now, it seems like Roblox has abandoned the idea of giving players that choice. And instead, it's just a setting hidden somewhere in Roblox Studio. So when you make the game, you get an option that says like, oh, do you want everyone to be R15? or R6. So the average Roblox player effectively isn't exposed to the idea of R6 or R15 anymore, and it feels like a lot of players have almost forgotten about that even being a thing. And this also means that a lot of new players don't even really know what the difference between the rigs even is. Now, for those who don't know, R15 came out in, I believe it was 2016, around that. And before it came out, R6 was considered the default rig type. And it wasn't even really called R16, it was just the basic Roblox rig. And if I just summon one in real quick, this is what it looked like. Just a head, torso, arms, and legs. A very simple rig. And anyone who's ever played Roblox will say, well yeah, I mean, this is the basic avatar that Roblox is known for. Which then begs the question, what was wrong with the R6 rig? And to even begin answering that, we first have to understand what a rig actually is. So Roblox as a game platform doesn't give you that much answers to this, but luckily I'm using Roblox Studio, which has a rig builder. This menu effectively shows every single built-in default rig that Roblox supports. We can choose between R6 and R15, we can choose between masculine and feminine, and we can also choose different types of avatars. So I can pick my avatar, an R4 avatar, a block avatar, or one of the mesh avatars. So if I were to pick something like the skinned avatar, we would get something like this. And this honestly just made me speechless because I did not expect this to be the result, I'll be honest. But I mean, obviously, you know, if we pick some normal avatar, like, I don't know, a mesh avatar, for example, then it's gonna look like this, right? I'll assume you're a lot more familiar with, like, this type of avatar than whatever that thing just was. And if I take a look inside of an avatar, we can see that it actually has a good amount of stuff. It has its parts, right? This character in specific has mesh parts, which effectively determine the shape of, you know, his hands and torso and legs. It also has a built-in script meant to animate the rig. It has a humanoid, which determines certain settings about the rig, such as its health, hip height, how fast it can walk, and also how high it can jump. Now, anybody who's ever done anything in Roblox Studio will know that this is exactly what the player character has. I mean, if I look inside my avatar right now, it has some extra things, like it has, the, you know, the extra... Uh, like the headphones and you know my you know chad <laughs> suits and everything but it has the humanoid with the same exact properties it has a script that determines the health for the player so this isn't written by me this is a default roblox script and as you can see it also has the parts so a rig is effectively meant to be some sort of a character inside of your game by default every single player gets a rig made for them and that rig takes on the appearance of you know their roblox avatar but a rig doesn't have to be attached to a player you you could make a rig into an NPC, right? You could script the rig to walk around and have some sort of logic without it being a real player. You also don't have to stick with the default rigs that Roblox provides, so you are able to, you know, create your own characters, make your own models, give them your own, you know, like health, uh, speed values, you know, all of that. And players also aren't just locked to one rig. You can make a player switch between different rigs, or you can just remove a rig from the player, which would turn them into some sort of like freeform camera, if that's something that you wanted for your game. Now, a question that some of you might have is, what exactly defines a rig? Because I just said that people are able to create their own rigs, so what are the requirements for a custom rig? And as far as I know, there really are only two requirements that make up a rig. The first one being an actual humanoid, so we know that this is meant to be like a livable character. And the second one is a root part, which is the, like the main part of the character. This is basically what everything else should be attached to. And from there you obviously have the extra stuff like accessories, you know, a custom script, other parts that are attached to the root part, and also like certain joint items just to let the game know that like, hey, this is a joint, it's supposed to be like a limb or whatever. And that's about it. Like I know there's a lot of stuff in this character, but honestly once you kind of understand that, you'll realize that a Roblox rig isn't actually that complicated and doesn't actually have 
that much to work with. Which then again brings us to the main question of why was the R15 rig added in favor of the R6? So here I've just made two rigs. This one, as you can see by the name, is the R6, and this one is the R15. And I would just like you to quickly take a look at both of these rigs and see what's different about them. I mean, for starters, this one seems a bit less blocky. It seems to have, like, more parts over here. Like, this one has, like, a little hand thing, and also a little, like, you know, other torso, while this one just has a block and... It looks more blocky than this one. And if that was your thinking process, then you are entirely correct. This is the only difference between the R6 and the R15. The main difference is clear once we open up both rigs. If I take a look at the R6, we have the head, okay. We have the humanoid root part, which is inside of the middle of the character. And then we have the arm, the leg, the arm, leg, and torso, and that is it. Each arm is its own part, each leg is its own part, the torso is just one big cube, and you know, we have the head and the humanoid root part. Now, if I were to open up the R15 rig, we also have the head, which is great, but then we have the left foot, which is this thing on the bottom, we have the left hand, which is this on the bottom, we have a lower arm, a lower leg, an upper arm, and an upper leg. And this is true for the right arm and leg as well. And this is also true for the torso. Instead of just being one big cube, we have the upper torso over here and the lower torso over here. With the humanoid root part remaining effectively unchanged. This is the only benefit of the R15 rig. The fact that it has more parts to work with. In fact, that's what the name R6 and R15 even mean. R6 means that there are 6 parts to work with, excluding the humanoid root part. And R15 means that there are 15 parts to work with, also excluding the humanoid root part. But why is this good? I mean, sure, it's more realistic and it's more detailed, but we've already had, you know, these styles of avatars. Like, we've already seen Roblox try realism in their game, but this style of avatar has never really done well for them. So what exactly did the R15 rig do that this style of rig did not do? Well, for starters, the R15 is just a basic Roblox rig, but just with more features. I mean, that should be fairly obvious, but it, it was just something that I wanted to point out. Another benefit of having a lot of parts is that it makes animations just a lot more smoother. I mean, for example, let's say I wanted to make an animation where the character raises their hand up. This is not really a smooth animation. To just have the hand just rotate like this, you know, while it still looks and feels like Roblox, it doesn't really give creators that much choices. It's gonna be hard to make the animation unique when the only thing that you have to do is just rotate the part around. But then the R15 rig now splits that arm into three different sections. So instead of just rotating this one big block, you'd have to rotate this a bit, then you'd have to rotate, you know, this section as much as you want, and then also rotate the lower portion of the arm because it's meant to represent the hand of the player. And obviously these are just rough movements, like this isn't me doing an actual animation. If I was, I'd be using the animation editor. But a good way to put this into practice would be to actually play as these characters. So just for example, right, if I were to rename the R6 to be starter character and then put him inside of, I think it was starter player, then if I go and play the game right now, look at these animations. As you can see, whenever I walk around, it's a very simplistic animation. It looks good, sure, it's very charming, I would say, but the way that the arms move and the legs move is honestly fairly simple. But then if I were to do something like that, but for the R15 character, then you can already see that even the default idle animation takes use of the fact that we have multiple parts to work with. And if I were to run like this, there's just a lot more fluid movement. There's just a lot more that the arms can do, that the legs can do. And this is just a running animation, right? If you look at something like jumping or falling or like some sort of custom animation for your game, you can see that there's just so much more that the Roblox avatar can now do that the R6 rig just struggles to do by default. But let me defend the R6 rig for a moment. I might have said earlier in the video that the R6 rig is a flat out upgrade, but that's not entirely true. Because if that was true, then Roblox wouldn't even give you the option to use an older rig. For starters, the R6 rig is easier to work with because it has less parts. I mean, that should be fairly obvious, but I just spent a good amount of time praising the R15 for, you know, having a lot of customization and everything, but sometimes customization isn't everything. Sometimes having a lot of things available to you isn't actually better. Like for example, maybe you don't want your game to be highly realistic. Maybe you want your game to have a simpler art style. Maybe the animations inside of your game 
don't require the player to have like, you know, curly arms or curly legs or whatever. And in that case, an R6 rig would be objectively better. I mean, the first reason is obviously that it's a simpler looking rig, and if your game needs simplicity, then this is, you know, obviously the best choice out of the two. But the second thing also is that animating the character would be a lot easier. Because let's say if I want to animate the arm moving up, and I don't mean easier in the technical sense, because if I were to open up the animation editor right now, I am able to move the entire arm or leg of the R15 rig by just moving like the upper part of the limb. But often a simple animation on the R15 rig would just look, but often a simple animation on the R15 rig just would look unpolished, unfinished, and also unnatural. Because like you saw before, the default animations of the R15 rig use all of these sections, right? Like, they they ensure that the arms are curly, they ensure that the legs are curly, and sure, you could replace these default animations with your own animations, but at that point, just use the R6 rig. So, the basic summary of the entire topic is that the R6 rig is simple, and the R15 rig is the more advanced variation. Use the R15 when you want a lot more freedom and a lot more choice in your character type, and use the R6 rig when your entire game relies on being fairly simple, because that's when the simple aspect of this rig can really shine. But I will say that I will always prefer R15, and every single game that I'll make, I will always use R15, just because it's too much control to give up for an art style, just in my opinion. And this is also the reason why almost every single mainstream and popular Roblox game out there uses R15 over R6. Like, literally every single one. Play whatever game, it'll have R15. And at this point, I'm sure that Roblox is simply keeping the R6 rig just for backwards compatibility. But honestly, if Roblox just implemented some sort of change that automatically converts R6 rigs into R15 rigs, I'm very skeptical that anybody would dislike that change. I think everyone is already used to R15, I think everybody likes R15, and the only people who would be against the R15 rig being removed are people who are just used to the simple art style of Roblox. And this includes me, I really like the way that this thing moves and looks like. But we can all hopefully agree that that just isn't a good reason to keep an outdated feature inside of Roblox. But with that being said, um, these two rigs, you know what these two rigs remind me of? Uh, they remind me of two pigeons. In case you didn't know, uh, I have like pigeons as pets. Not really pets, we just found them, we raised them, and now they fly uh, to us every now and then for food. And the reason I'm saying this is because on my Instagram, I have a photo of the pigeons and it looks really cool and I want followers. So go to the link in the description and the pinned comment, check out my Instagram, go follow and look at the picture of the pigeons. And I will also say that I do have a course. Uh, this is very unrelated because in this video, obviously I didn't teach anything about coding or scripting or anything like that. But if you have been a long time viewer and if you do feel like you like my teaching style and you want to learn more about Roblox Studio, then like I said, I do have a course, it is $40, so it might be a bit pricey for you, but do go check it out, again, link is in the description and the pinned comment. And yeah, leave a comment, let me know what you think of the whole rig debate. It's not even a debate, honestly, I don't think people complain about any rig, but I just thought it'd be cool to talk about it, because I haven't really seen anyone mention it recently, so I thought it'd be a cool topic to discuss. And as always, we're back to basics, thank you for watching.